What's up guys, Hazen here back with another video. This time I hold a big phone in all its lavender purple glory. It's got some childhood cartoons on its screen. I make it stand on its own and I take pictures with it. I pour water on it with music on. Then I pull out its stylus. So let's get started. Now, I don't quite know what to call this. Should I call it a note? Should I call it a phone? I don't know. I don't know what's the difference. You guys let me know in the comment section below. The Samsung Galaxy Note 9 is, in a nutshell, a beast of a phone. You're getting a lot of power and superb performance in this nice, elegant, glass sandwiched package. Starting off with the screen here, you get a volume rocker on this side, a dedicated Bixby button right below it, down here, we can see a stylus, a speaker grill, a USB Type-C port, and a headphone jack. That on this other side is the power button, and on top you're getting your SIM card slot, which houses the SIM card and a micro SD card. Now starting with the form factor on this flagship device, we see that it's glass sandwiched. You've got Gorilla Glass 5 both on the front and the back of the phone. This means that the phone is a fingerprint magnet. You might want to consider getting a cover for it, just to keep the smudges off. Also having Gorilla Glass 5 on here means that it's safe from scratches from your keys or your coins if they end up in the same pocket. The device has got a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display which gives you at 83.4 screen to body ratio. This is achieved by that edge to edge carving screen and that thin chain and forehead. It packs a 1440 by 2960 resolution with an 18 by 9 aspect ratio. You're also allowed to bump that resolution all the way up to wide quad HD plus to make those colors more punchy, but at a cost where the battery will drain faster. The screen also has some nice viewing angles and you'll not find yourself struggling to use it outdoors due to that really bright screen. And you get some always on action packed on board. Personally, I like the heft of the phone, the way it feels in your hand. It weighs 201 grams and you'll definitely notice if it's not in your pocket. Now more on the device's form factor, the Samsung Note 9 is IP68 dust and waterproof and this goes for up to 1.5 meters immersed in water for 30 minutes so you don't have to worry about using it in the rain, taking a swim with it or dunking it in the sink. That IP rating does assure you that no water enters your phone. I did a splash test with it and drenched it for some time and I can say that that IP rating is indeed legit. Good for when your phone hits up at times, you know, you can just dip it in some cold water. Now, moving on to that camera tech. Note 9 main camera sports a dual camera setup. You'll find a 12 megapixel f1.5 wide angle lens that allows you to fit more in one shot and it's backed up with optical image stabilization. Optical image stabilization makes it easier for you to capture moving objects. And you also get another 12 megapixel f2.4 telephoto with two times optical zoom. And it does come with optical image stabilization. On the software end, there are all these camera modes to play with when you're taking your photos. And I must say, that main camera does a pretty good job with the shot it takes. Now flipping to the front of the phone, we find a single 8 megapixel f1.7 wide angle front selfie camera which comes with autofocus which helps you take some decent shots. But personally, I've never quite liked Samsung's front cameras compared to other devices. I feel like they can do better in that department but all the same, they still do take some really pretty, pretty good photos. Now the main camera will also allow you to shoot up to 4K videos with the selfie camera shooting up to 1440p videos. Now, how about those performance specs? You're getting 108.1 straight out of the box. Now, this is upgradable to the latest Android 9 Pi. You're also getting Samsung's One UI installed, which I must say is quite a clean and smooth user interface. You're also getting a Snapdragon 845 chipset backed with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage as such, apps will launch without delay and you're getting this fluid navigation through the phone. And in terms of gaming, 
games do run without any lag and with smooth frame rates. Now, multitasking is also very easy on this device. You can open apps and leave apps running in the background and pick them up where you left them without having to restart the app. Now, that means you can leave apps running in the background for a longer period of time and still pick up where you are without having to restart the app. Now, a Snapdragon 845 chipset is indeed a power hunger chipset, but with this phone, you're getting a 4,000 mAh battery. Now, moving on to the productivity highlight of the Note line of Samsung devices, the stylus. So, you pull this stylus out when you want to scribble some notes and carry out a couple of tasks. Once pulled out, you'll get this suit of apps which you can interact with using the stylus. You can also customize that suit to add and remove apps you want. It's a nice plus to have, but I found it a little bit gimmicky because I don't see myself using a stylus anywhere. Now, also, you can use the stylus to launch your camera and take pictures with your camera. Simply double tap the stylus button to launch the camera, tap once to take a picture, press and hold to turn to the selfie camera. That's a nice use for the stylus, but I still don't see myself quite using it. Still on productivity and usability, you get this edge feature that allows you to access shortcuts, your favorite contacts, and some of the phone features like the compass and the ruler. This makes it easy to access frequently used apps instead of jumping into the app drawer to find them. That's in the case where you have so many apps on your device. Now, since this is Samsung, you get your Bixby home feed when you swipe right on your screen. Now, I must say Bixby does look pretty neat and it feels pretty fluid when you're using it. It also does a good job at being an assistant. Samsung now allow you to remap that Bixby button to launch any app you want apart from the Google Assistant. Now, I find that funny because the alternative that most people will prefer in place of Bixby will be the Google Assistant. Plus, this update doesn't quite allow you to do away with Bixby completely. You still have to set the button to launch Bixby. Example, a double tap off the Bixby button to launch Bixby and one tap to launch your Netflix app. Now, turning to the gestures on this device, we see three lines at the bottom of the screen. Now, how these work is you swipe up on the left line to access your recent apps from where you can do some split screen or pop-up multitasking. You swipe up and hold the middle line to launch your Google Assistant and you can swipe it up to go back to the home screen. Then you can swipe on the last line to go back a step. Also, since this is quite a large phone, you can swipe down on the fingerprint sensor to drag the notification bar up and down, which is quite a cool gesture if you ask me. You also get some one-handed mode action on board when you want to use the phone one-handed. Now, overall, I say this is a great package. You're definitely getting every bang for buck from the device's features, performance, usability, durability, and the looks. I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe for more. My name is Hezion. I'll catch you in the next one.